This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is a space station. We are ready for the event. Ambassador Sullivan, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Ambassador Sullivan. How do you hear me? Ambassador Sullivan, welcome aboard the International Space Station and the crew of Expedition 63. Where we hear you loud and clear. Terrific. Well, it's great to be with you today to the crew to, uh, to uh, mark this historic anniversary. Good afternoon from, from, uh, from us in, in Moscow. I'm honored to participate in this, uh, this event uh, marking the Apollo Soyuz Test Project's 45th anniversary. One of the first accomplished in space jointly by our two countries in July 1975 uh, was managing the challenge of docking the American Apollo and the Russian Soyuz spacecrafts, spacecrafts with different atmospheres. The overall time of 46 hours flown in space together as one crew was a great historic accomplishment for the technical teams on the ground and the courageous five men in space. 
The Apollo-Soyuz test project was an indispensable technical precursor of the Mir shuttle program in the 1990s. And of course, you are the beneficiaries of the current International Space Station program, uh, which we're, uh, we're communicating with today. The United States and Russia are still using significant engineering achievements of that original joint project. From a human standpoint, it's highly notable that the two commanders, General Tom Stafford and General Alexei Leonov, became close, close friends and they maintained their, their friendship until Alexei Arkhipovich's uh, recent passing. Just a few weeks ago, on June 27th, we marked the 25th anniversary of another historical uh, achievement in space accomplished by our two countries. In 1995, the Space, uh, space Shuttle Atlantis STS-71 crew successfully docked with the Russian Mir space station. Atlantis delivered a special docking module made by Russian engineers which made it possible to connect two different engineering systems in space. To this day, our countries continue the tradition of, his, of the historic handshake in space established in July 1975. Each time a new crew arrives at the International Space Station, we see how the current crew gives a hearty greeting to the newcomers. As we all know, we have uh, Expedition 63 on board the space station, which includes U.S. astronauts Chris Cassidy, Doug Hurley, and Bob Benkin, and Russian cosmonauts Anatoly Ivanishin and Ivan Wagner. This is uh, truly an international crew committed to working together in space. And whether you travel to the, uh, the station on the Soyuz or the Crew Dragon, these expeditions show how the entire world benefits when we work together to pursue gains in scientific endeavors and explore the first, furthest reaches of the, uh, of the universe. And in the spirit of this joint cooperation, I understand that Elon Musk and the Korolev family had a very cordial call last week to pass along their mutual respect for the historical achievements of Sergei Pavlovich Korolev uh, and for Elon Musk's recent accomplishments. This cooperative engagement is really heartwarming and brings us all closer together. Once again, I want to congratulate you on the 45th anniversary of the Apollo Soyuz uh, uh, docking. And I was, uh, I was noting to my colleagues, I am, uh, I'm old enough that uh, 1975 doesn't seem that long ago to me. But when I think about all the changes that have happened uh, since then, in 1975, Leonid Brezhnev was the general secretary of the, uh, the Communist Party of the USSR. Gerald Ford was president of the United States. Um, and Chris, I hope you're a baseball fan. You'll appreciate my Boston Red Sox were uh, on the verge of playing and, playing and losing an historic World Series to the uh, Cincinnati Reds. But then I think about all that's happened over those 45 years in the relationship between the Soviet Union and the United States and now Russia and, and the United States. And one constant positive story has been our cooperation in space. So it's my great honor to, uh, to commemorate this 45th anniversary and to wish you great success during the remainder of your time aboard, uh, aboard the space, space station. And now I have the honor to welcome uh, my friend and colleague from the Russian Foreign Ministry, uh, Vasily Vladimirovich Boryak, the Deputy Director of the Department of North America, uh, to make some remarks. Thank you. Good morning, уважаемые члены экипажа МКС. Я представляю департамент Министерства иностранных дел, отвечающий за российско-американские отношения. Участвовать в праздновании 45-й годовщины полета Союз Аполлон совместно с вами большая честь. Благодарю наших хозяев, его превосходительство посла Салливана за такую возможность. К договоренности о проведении совместного космического экспериментов 
Советский Союз и Соединенные Штаты подошли не сразу. В 60-е годы наши ученые, представители Академии наук, представители НАСА начали договариваться о первых космических совместных экспериментах. А в 1972 году было подготовлено и заключено уже полноценное межправительственное соглашение о сотрудничестве в космосе. Таким образом, политики и дипломаты тоже внесли свой вклад в подготовку и в продвижение проекта «Аполлон-Союз». Конечно, весьма скромно. В последовавшие три года после заключения соглашения всеми участниками космических программ и советской, и американской были проведены колоссальные работы, решены серьезные инженерные задачи, реализованы непростые решения, обеспечившие успех этого полета. Именно в этот день, в июле, 45 лет назад, на орбите произошло знаменитое рукопожатие, о котором говорил господин Бастов. После этого э, и советское руководство, и президент США Джеральд Форд направили свои поздравления экипажам. Общий смысл этих посланий был в том, что эксперимент «Союз Аполлон» прокладывает путь к полноценному международному сотрудничеству в освоении космоса. Прошедшие годы подтвердили полную справедливость этой оценки. Извините, я должен свериться с нашими хозяевами. Я могу продолжать или... On this day in July, 45 years ago, a famous handshake took place in orbit. Uh, uh, my esteemed colleague Ambassador has mentioned that as well. Uh, Jer and the Soviet leadership and the, dirt, uh, the U.S. President Jared Ford congratulated the crew um, the overall message in all of the leadership uh, congratulations was that this uh, test, Apollo Soyuz program, uh, was paving the way to the full-fledged international cooperation in space, and the subsequent years uh, have proven that that message was true. Every step of cosmic research Наше общее стремление к их достижению ставит все более сложные и от этого, уверен, все более увлекательные задачи для новых поколений ученых, инженеров, космонавтов и астронавтов. Хотелось бы надеяться, что и на будущих этапах космической Одессеи мы сможем находить общие интересы а накопленный опыт сотрудничества по-прежнему будет востребован. Присоединяюсь к поздравлениям по случаю годовщины эксперимента Союза Полон и желаю экипажам успешного продолжения полета. Спасибо. And each step uh, in space exploration opens new horizons uh, in more and more complex um, exploration stages and uh, sets new tasks and goals for engineers and astronauts and cosmonauts. New, um, 
stages of space odyssey are uh, going to be uh, very interesting and i hope our accumulated experience will come useful for years to come congratulations on this uh, anniversary of the apollo soyuz program and congratulations to the crew thank you Gentlemen, I think well, we gentlemen, have thank you very much for your yeah, Oh, go uh, ahead, I Ambassador. Questions, but I wanted to turn, before that, I wanted to turn the, uh, the mic over to you, Chris, and, and your colleagues for anything you want to say. Well, uh, both of you, thank you for your time, and, and it's a real honor to join you on this historic uh, 45th anniversary uh, of Apollo Soyuz. We, we are halfway through our, our time but it, uh, on board the space station, but in all of our careers as cosmonauts and astronauts, it's been very normal, uh, the partnership between uh, Russia and the United States pro space programs. And we owe all of that to, the, uh, to our forefathers on the Apollo-Soyuz crews, engineers, and specialists that enabled it to happen and how we live in the, the world of the International Space Station where it's just part of our everyday life and, and it's nice to stop every now and then like today and appreciate how important it is our two countries' partnerships in space. Господин посол, Василий Владимирович, мы благодарим вас за теплые слова, которые мы услышали в свой адрес. Конечно, 45 лет со дня стыковки в Союз – это очень большое событие. И в 75 году, когда стыковка произошла, мне было всего 6 лет, я только собирался пойти в школу. И тогда я еще не понимал, насколько важное событие произошло и какое влияние оно окажет на мою последующую жизнь. И это большая честь для всех нас сегодня принимать участие в, в праздновании этого события, находясь на борту Международной космической станции, станции, которая стала символом международного сотрудничества в космосе, сотрудничества, первый шаг которому был положен ярким полетом кораблей Союза Аполлон. Dear Mr. Ambassador and Vasily Vladimirovich, thank you very much for your uh, welcome, for your kind words. It is in, indeed a great um, anniversary, 45 years, a great date. Uh, I remember that back in 1975, uh, when uh, this historic event took place, I was just six years old, and I was about to go to school. And uh, at that point, I could not yet appreciate all the magnitude of that event. And now it is a great honor for us to celebrate this historic event aboard the International Space Station, which has become the symbol of international cooperation. Спасибо вам большое за уделенное внимание. И это наш общий праздник, это общий праздник международного сотрудничества. И в 1975 году, 45 лет назад, было положено началом международному сотрудничеству в космосе, которое впоследствии вылилось в программу «Мир Шаттл» в 90-х. И сейчас мы находимся на Международной космической станции, где уже многие страны принимают участие в освоении космического пространства. И я надеюсь... Полеты к Луне и следующие космические миссии более интересные будут уже в международной кооперации. И действительно первым шагом к этому была стыковка, стыковка Союза Полон. Поздравляю всех с общим праздником. Once again, thank you very much uh, for the kind uh, words and for your congratulations. And uh, indeed, we are celebrating the 45th anniversary um, here aboard the International Space Station. It was a really, truly great first step stone to the international cooperation in space, which paved the way to the future uh, Mir shuttle program. Uh, and uh, now it is the ISS where so many countries participate and work together in space. We are also looking forward to the future cooperation on the lunar programs and uh, beyond. And uh, we are truly grateful that we have this opportunity to be here on the station and uh, participate in this wonderful international cooperation. Thank you so much. 
Well, Chris, Anatoly, and Ivan, it is a great honor for me to uh, to be able to participate in this uh, in this video conference with you. Um, I, I can tell you, I've, I've served a number of years in government. I've had the honor of being Deputy Secretary of State before serving as Ambassador to Russia. And there is nothing in my career to date that matches having uh, NASA Capcom communicating with me and then my being able to communicate with you. Uh, it's, uh, it's a real thrill. And as somebody who has been uh, followed our respective space programs closely it, with you, uh, astronauts and cosmonauts following in the footsteps of legends like Yuri Gagarin and Alan Shepard, it's, uh, it's a real honor uh, to be able to do that. I wonder if you could tell us uh, what are the goals of your mission, what you've accomplished to date, and you've got several months left before, uh, before your, your mission concludes. Uh, what are you looking to accomplish? Well, that's a great great question. There's so so much going on here on the on the space station. It's hard to capsule capturize all that in one succinct answer. Uh, but in general, we're taking care of ourselves. We're taking care of the space station, and we're taking care of science and research. And uh, and that, that that's how you. I kind of categorize every single day, which blurs into every single week up here. We're executing a really, really robust science program. Both uh, Anatoly and Ivan have uh, daily science, as do uh, myself and, and Bob and Doug. And that is in a whole host of different um, areas of scientific research. But then to enable that, we have to keep the space station running. And it's a big mechanical system, which requires maintenance and sometimes repairing things that fail. Uh, so a portion of our time is spent on that. And then the rest of the time, I lump into taking care of ourselves. Eating, sleeping, and exercise this takes up a surprising amount of time. As long as we're healthy and the space station's healthy, then we can do our primary mission, which is push the boundaries of, of science exploration uh, off the surface of the Earth. So specifically, we've done a couple spacewalks in the last few weeks, and, uh, and then, the, the, of course, the science is, is ongoing. Yeah, did, I, did I hear that uh, Doug and Bob did a spacewalk yesterday? Say that one more time, Ambassador. I didn't quite hear. Uh, that your colleagues Doug and Bob, uh, I was told, that did a, a spacewalk recently uh, within the last few days. Yeah, uh, myself and Bob did a spacewalk yesterday, and and uh, two weeks ago as well. Uh, that that was our third one together, and in four days we'll, we'll do one, one final spacewalk before they start wrapping up their mission, and and it's looking like the Dragon capsule will return to Earth sometime around the first week in August. Uh, so that's really not so far away, and their two months here has really gone by very quickly for us. Well, we've all seen the movies of uh, astronauts and cosmonauts doing spacewalks. Uh, as someone who's actually done one, can you describe for us the sensation of being out in outer space and not inside that comfy-looking uh, station? Well, you know, I, I, I'm asked this question a lot, and I've come up with a good analogy. Imagine that you're at the top of a skyscraper inside the building, and you put your face up against the glass, and you look down, it's really far, and you think, wow, it's far down there. But you feel safe because your feet are on the floor, and your hand is holding a handrail, and there's glass between you. As soon as you open the hatch of on a spacewalk and you go outside, it's the same thing as being one more flight up in that tall skyscraper, and now your toes are standing over the edge of the building and you're looking down and your brain is saying, what are you doing? This is not a safe place to be. And, uh, and, and you can have that feeling on a spacewalk when you're just one hand holding and you see between your toes earth going uh, five miles a second. Um, and you can let that distract you. But fortunately, we have very good training in, in a pool, both in, in Star City and in Houston. And it's a very comforting thought to mentally put yourself in the pool because the space station looks similar to what we train on. And that settles you down and you get on with the work. But it is really quite eye-opening the first time that hatch opens and you see 
the uh, the grandeur of the space station contrasted with the Earth below. It's it's unbelievable. Well, I must say it's it's very impressive to see you let go of the microphone or pass it without actually physically passing it to uh, to Anatoly and Ivan as it floats uh, floats in space. Um, I wonder if I might ask Anatoly or Ivan. Um, I mean, we've seen, as an American, I've seen uh, a lot of movies and television programs about the U.S. Uh, space program and uh, whether it's the right stuff or uh, Tom Hanks uh, saving the day in, uh, in another movie. I get a sense of what motivates uh, Americans to become astronauts and how they're idealized, quite rightfully so, as heroes. I'm assuming it's the same is same as true in Russia uh, that cosmonauts are as astronauts are in the United States really uh, looked up to and uh, I wonder if I might ask what inspired you to become a cosmonaut? Oh, uh, it's difficult to say. Uh... Uh, when I was growing up, uh, we always uh, heard about the people who, who, fly, who flew to space. Uh, but uh, it's even difficult for me to to remember when it was for the first time when I started thinking uh, uh, that this is a possibility for me uh, one day to fly to space. Uh, but finally, it happened, and I became a cosmonaut. And uh, my first mission was in 2011. And, uh, you know, because uh, we are working in this joint program, uh, International Space Station program, uh, we have training all over the world. We have uh, quite, quite often, uh, often business trips uh, to the United States, to Europe, to Japan. And when you start uh, getting ready to your space flight, uh, uh, you start working with different space agencies, uh, you know more people. And I want to mention that uh, my business trips to different space agencies, uh, NASA including, uh, was always, uh, has always been very good. And I remember very warm uh, the relation with the people, with the instructors. And uh, I think that uh, the fact that we have been so successful in flying to space together arises from the fact that uh, we have a feeling of mutual respect to each other. Well, I, I sense um, in, in, in the U.S. government, and I know in the Russian government as well, uh, real momentum behind our, uh, our respective space programs uh, and optimism for the future, uh, which is really, uh, uh, you know, had, had dimmed a little bit, I might say, over the last couple of decades, and I know Chris mentioned uh, the Moon, uh, the moon uh, program uh, and beyond. Give me a sense of what you are, as experienced astronauts and cosmonauts, what your, your hopes are for the future for, uh, for space exploration uh, and, uh, and in what, what sort of time frame do you think? Well, I think that, that uh, international cooperation is, we've, is sort of embedded in the fabric of space culture these days, and, and that, that for sure will, will continue. And uh, it, it, Yvonne, I think it was Yvonne that mentioned we will probably, we'll, we look forward to seeing this on a lunar mission, and uh, the technologies that we're really fine-tuning on board the International Space Station are going to be the bedrock of technologies that allow us safely to go to the moon and then eventually on to Mars. So um, a robust environmental control system is a perfect example. It takes some, it's taken a few years of the space station operation to really understand how we can reclaim our water uh, so effectively. And that now will be part of uh, going to the moon and going to Mars because you need water, you need food, you need to way to process all those things. And that's, that's just a small example of, of the part that, that we've learned on, on the station. So what I'm most excited for is, is seeing expedition crews beyond low Earth orbit. I, I don't believe it'll be in my and Anatoly's time frame as cosmonauts and astronauts. We never know. Uh, it, it 
certainly could be in Ivan. It's Ivan's first mission. It's our third mission. So Ivan has uh, the possibility of, of going on to, to the moon and possibly Mars. Uh, but whenever it is, it's something that I think will be very uniting. So think about this. When people walked on the moon, it was grainy black and white televisions and radios. When somebody walks on the moon again or eventually on to Mars, every single person on the planet probably, more, maybe I'm exaggerating by 10 or 15 people, but almost everybody is going to have a mobile device in their hand with the live streaming footage from that person's helmet camera walking around on the planet. And how cool will that be? How uniting will that be to have the entire world focused on this one positive event? And I think that uh, particularly what in 2020, that's something we can all look forward to. Absolutely inspiring words, Chris. If I might ask one final question of Yvonne, since you're the most junior, uh, and this is your first time on the, uh, on the space station, is there anything that surprised you uh, when you uh, when you arrived on station about either life on the space station or uh, anything that uh, that was a surprise to you and how how well prepared did you feel? Uh, the most surprises for me it's weightlessness. Of course, uh, it, it's very difficult to imitate on the ground and uh, all um, effects which uh, connected with weightless, weightlessness uh, all, all of this um, have a big surprise and um, the second um, thing it's uh, maybe um, uh, engines like engines is working it's, uh, it's very interesting and and when it's you feel it in a real and it's uh, it's very interesting and uh, no not famous for you because on the ground you couldn't uh, imitate this process too okay we've only got a couple of minutes left so if i might ask one one final question uh to the group of you um what would you say to young people in russia and the united states uh, you might be watching this, this program now uh, about the future of space exploration and encouraging them uh, to be interested in space and someday doing what, uh, what you're doing, but farther out in our universe. Well, I, I think uh, young, young people probably are in, in all over the world are motivated by the same thing, just uh, having fun together, being uh, cooperating on the playground, but then being inspired by things that uh, are exciting, enthusiastic, and interesting to them. And that's what I think spaceflight does. It's so cool, even for us, uh, who we've been involved in the space program for our, our, as a profession, it's so cool to see a human being strapped into a rocket and blasting off. We watched with, with that enthusiasm uh, a month ago when Bob and Doug launched from Florida and their rocket ship, and we knew that that rocket ship was coming straight to us. And uh, it just gave me chills to, to think about it. And I, I hope that that's what uh, our our profession does for young people it inspires them maybe to be astronauts and cosmonauts but also to work in in the the supporting fields engineering and the in the technology that allows it allows us to do this and allows the uh, international space cooperation to happen so that's my hope for the young the young folks out there well, thank you, uh, thank you, Chris and uh, Yvonne and, and Anatoly. I think we're uh, we're out of time, but it's been a great honor. And Vasily, thank you for uh, for joining us. A uh, great honor to speak with you. Safe travels, safe journey back. Uh, success with the mission and safe journey back uh, back to work. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Stay safe. Спасибо. Мягкой посадки.